According to family therapist Virginia Satir, we're supposed to have four hugs a day for survival, eight hugs a day for maintenance, and 12 hugs a day for growth. Where are you at in your daily hug count? everybody welcome back to the Keandra Jackson show I am your host licensed marriage and family therapist Keandra Jackson now look this topic came up because I seen this single black woman I believe it was on Instagram or TikTok where she was expressing and crying and sharing her experience with being touch deprived or what we like to call touch starvation and she talked about how she goes through these episodes where she feels so lonely so separated so down and depressed because she doesn't get touched now i know you guys are probably like say what girl what do you mean you don't get touched but when you are single when you live alone when you go through your daily life routine you may or may not have family you may or may not have friends close by you can go through long stints and long periods of time where you are not touched where you are not hugged, where you are not consoled, where you are not anything. And this topic really hit me because I was reading through some of the comments and she wasn't alone. And not to say that it's just for black single women, but there were so many women in the comments who expressed that they felt the exact same way, but they just didn't have the language or the term to really talk about it and verbalize it because people really don't understand because they say, oh, just go hug your mama, go hug a stranger, go get your nails done, go get a massage, that's touch. And while that is touch, it's not the same as being touched and hugged and cuddled with by someone who actually loves you. And to take it a step further, someone who is in love with you. So in this video, I'm going to break down five different ways that you can manage touch starvation if you are in this particular boat and you are not getting the amount of hugs and touch that Virginia Satir recommended when I mentioned it in the beginning of this video. And before I even get to that part, this whole thing reminded me of a study that I wrote about in my book, Hard Work or Harmony, where back in, I believe it was like the 1940s or something like that, the United States actually held an experiment on infants. Now, let me tell you, this is before laws and before ethics, and you know, you can't do stuff like this now. And I'll link the article in the description just in case you guys want to read it, but it was 40 newborns that they took. They took 20 of those newborns, placed them in a sterile environment where only their physical needs got met only for survival. So there were the experimenters who came in, they fed the babies, they changed the babies, but they did not communicate with them. They did not give them extra hugs and kisses. They just did the very basic things that they needed for survival. Then there was another group of the 20 that had all of the things, right? They got all of the hugs and the kisses and the coddles and the coochie coochie, all of the things. They were fed, they were all of that. Guess what happened? The first group where the 20 didn't get the love and affection and the touch that they were supposed to get, they actually died, y'all, one by one, slowly but surely. They said that each child started to basically shut down because they had no need for survival. Oh, heartbroken, right? And then of course, the other group of 20, they thrived, they lived well, they grew up, they did all of the things. And I was just like, this is a prime example of how important touch is. All the way from when you were a child, touch is important. And think about how much more important it is as you grow and evolve and become an adult. That affection, that need for physical touch does not change. God created us to love and be loved and physical touch is a huge, part of that. So I didn't mean to go on a whole little, you know, nerdy psychology experimental situation on y'all, but I just wanted to share with you guys how important it is to get some type of physical touch in your life. So let's talk about these five ways that you can initiate and implement so you won't feel as touch starved or touch deprived as you potentially could. Now, I know, like I mentioned before, some of these elements that I'm going to mention to you, they are not supposedly from people that are in love with you or things of that nature because everybody is not in that boat and everybody doesn't necessarily want to be in a romantic relationship. But if you are struggling in this area and you are on the brink of being depressed, 
You are on the brink of letting go. You are on the brink of not knowing what to do because all of these emotions are bubbling up and you have nowhere to go. You have no outlet. I believe at least one or two of these things are going to help you. So if you know anybody who's struggling with this, I want you to share this video with them. Now let's get into the first one. Now stick with me here because I have said this a million and one times before and people look at me like I'm cray cray. They look at me crazy. I literally did a poll one time on my Instagram stories and asked people this very thing and people were like, no, I don't do that. I would never do that. That's kind of weird. And I'm like, well, you probably should try. So the first thing is actually to hug yourself. I know, I said, stick with me here, stick with me here. People don't realize that you also crave your own physical touch. Have you ever rubbed lotion on yourself? Have you ever caressed your body? Have you ever done anything to self-soothe? People do like little uh, mind things where it's just like, oh, let me rub my neck and rub. Have you ever gotten a massage and it just felt amazing? <laughs> Think about if you massage yourself. Now I'm not talking about anything sexual or anything like that because y'all like to take things too far, but I'm saying your own physical touch can help eliminate some of that touch starvation that somebody may be experiencing. So literally I'm talking about just sitting still, taking a few deep breaths, in and out just to calm yourself, calm your mind and literally wrapping your arms around yourself and feeling your own fingers touch your own arms, your own fingers touch your own shoulders, to hug and squeeze tight. I hope y'all can hear me because of the mic, but to hug and squeeze tight, touching yourself in this aspect and hugging yourself in this aspect can alleviate a lot of the issues that you may be experiencing. I have done this a million and one times. Not necessarily, well, I am a single female, okay, currently at the recording of this video because my husband's coming, huh? <laughs> but I have done that before in times where I'm just like, I need to calm my own nervous system down, right? And this is why cuddling and hugging and being in a romantic relationship, it actually has physiological benefits. But that's a whole nother video for a whole other time. So people think that, oh, I'm just holding hands with my partner or we're just cuddling. But no, it actually helps you physiologically and calms your nervous system down. It can reduce your blood pressure. It can do all of those things. So if it has health benefits to be hugged and touched, how much more should we hug and touch ourselves? The next one is to connect with other people. Now I mentioned earlier in this video, if you are looking for that touch from a romantic partner or a romantic interest, this may not be the one for you. However, for people who are on the brink of saying, I cannot go another day, it is so important for you to connect with somebody who cares about you. So whether that is family members, whether that is friends, whether that is a coworker, whether that is a random stranger on the street. At this point, connect with somebody to get the physical touch you need. And I know that people's family are separate. Some people don't have friends. People have friends, but they're not close by. And so everyone's situation is very different. I am aware of that. But at least find one person, somebody who can actually give you a genuine hug. I have a friend who gives the best freaking hugs on the planet. TJ Mercer, if you've never heard of her, you need to look her up, right? She is a self-proclaimed hugger, okay? <laughs> and I know that everybody isn't a hugger, everybody doesn't like to be touched, but I was at an event when I met her years, 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 years ago, and she was a keynote speaker. And she mentioned that she gives the best hugs, and after the event, if you wanted a good hug, come up to her and get a hug. And I was like, let me see what this hug is about, okay? Because if it's legit, then sis. I'm here for it. So at the end, I don't even know if she remembers the story, but at the end, we were all having lunch and things of that nature. And I went up to her and I said, oh, I need a hug. And the way she hugged me, the way she embraced me, the tightness of, I mean, I was like, oh, this is exactly what I needed. Like it was the sweetest thing ever. And I did not know her at the time. So technically I was getting a hug from a stranger, but it was the very thing that I needed. And I've even seen people on the streets that have those cards up, you know, and it says like free hugs or, you know, free prayer or free whatever, you know. Even if you have to do something like that and get a hug from a stranger to help you, do that. The third one is to engage in some type of physical activity. 
So I know you're probably like, what does this got to do with touching somebody? So engaging in activities where there are other people involved, like group activities, can really implement some form of touch, right? So say for instance, you're going to a dance class and you have to have a dance partner, say for instance, salsa or something sexy, like a little, you know, a little situation. <laughs> you have to touch your partner your dance partner, you have to get close to them. You have to, you know, do a little dance move and they got to touch your hips and you know, all of those things. And so that's just an example of finding some type of group activity that you can participate in where you are in close proximity to other people and there's some type of touch that you can receive from them. And this isn't something that you have to verbalize and say, hey, I'm coming here because I'm touch deprived. Uh, a little touch starvation over here. So I'm here because I need for you to grab me close when we dance. They're going to look at you crazy, right? But this just is a time for you to get exactly what you need without even verbalizing it. And you may think that if these things are, you know, not a big deal or it's not going to work, but you can't knock it until you try it. And the next one is practicing self care. So if you are a self care person, as we all should, you should be implementing some of the things where touch is included anyway, right? So we talked a little bit earlier about getting a massage. Now I know sometimes you get massages from strangers or not necessarily strangers, but you know, you go to a massage place and you don't necessarily get the person that you're always there for. Or you're going to a new place and you just get whoever is available. But that type of physical touch also reduces your stress, also reduces your blood pressure, also relaxes you. It has physiological benefits. So when you leave there, you should be feeling calmer, better, relaxed, and all of those things and not still on a 10 because you're feeling like you're not getting what you need. So massages are a good thing. Also baths. Listen, I, I told y'all we're not getting freaky on this video because some of y'all are like, oh yeah, bad, I'm gonna touch myself. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just talking about simply laying in the tub, washing yourself, exfoliating, doing, doing what you need to do. When you get out the bathtub, make sure you lotion yourself, put on some oil. Like you have the capacity to be able to touch yourself. And when we touch ourselves as far as non-sexual manner, we do that every day. Like, if you put on lotion and oil and all of those things on a regular basis, we do that so mundane. We do that as a part of our regular routine that we don't even realize that that is a form of touch. So if you just take your time a little bit more on that and actually feel what needs to be felt, feel yourself rubbing in the lotion on your arms, on your legs, on your body and tap into that sense, it not only is a little sensual, but it also can help you. So don't think I'm crazy on this, but try it out. And last but not least, because I am a licensed therapist in real life, for real, I want to add in, seek professional help when needed. If you are like, I cannot go another day without being connected with someone, without getting a hug, without feeling love, with, this could be indicative of a deeper issue, maybe in relationships, whether that is romantic or platonic, or just something more internally that you need to work through. And I understand that this isn't always a quick fix, but it can help you in so many different ways. Because we fail to realize that this touch situation is just one form of coping. There's so many different forms of coping. So if you find a therapist who is good, who can relate to you, who you can vibe out with, it can literally change your life. So listen, because we talked about so many things and our time is coming to an end because it's a wrap. I just wanted to share this with you because I believe that it is a growing thing that so many of us are experiencing, but we're not talking about it enough. And God forbid someone is in such a low place that they feel like it's over, that they feel like they may want to end their life, that they feel like there's never a time and a place where they're going to get the hugs and the level of affection that they need. And so if you are one of those people who don't get any hugs at all, if you are somebody who only received the four or the eight hugs, you're not at the 12 mark of the thriving and the growth situation, it's okay. I'm here for you. It's okay. I don't get 12 hugs a day either. 
it's okay. But the fact that you are watching this video and trying to do something about it shows you everything that you need to know about your strength and about your desire to move forward and keep going and keep pushing. So if you know somebody who needs to hear this video, please share it with them. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Be blessed.